right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to EC Head Consulting, our Notary Nuggets on Wednesday. I am Tamika Harris. I am the Notary Notary One on One Trainer for EC One. One, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, the lady that just inter uh, just interrupted me is our our trainer for this evening, the owner of EC Head Consulting, and also my mother. Elizabeth Head, we call her Liz for short. Well, I call her mom. Y'all can call her Liz. Okay, and so welcome for our series. We'll be doing a series for the three weeks in May. We're so excited to have y'all here. Please, uh, if you are interested in a notary class, please look into having a class with us. We offer them monthly. Okay, we have notary one on one, we have workshop one, which is loan document review, and workshop two, which is also a loan document review. Uh, get in a class. If loan signing is what you plan on doing, you need to know how to do it correctly so you can stay out of trouble and keep your commission. All right, so we're going to get it started with that 1003. It's on the screen. Let's take it away, Liz. I forgot to introduce you. I'm so sorry. Well, you just said I was your mom, so I guess that was it. Well, you know, we have to know why we're here. Like, wh what do you know about loan science? You know, just because you're my mom, okay? I know I know what you know, okay? So Liz Head has, has 30 years mortgage banking experience. She's been a loan signing agent for six years. She started training four years ago. Uh, we were in the classroom, and then when COVID came, we kind of pivoted to Zoom, and I'm loving it. I love doing training classes in my pajama pants. So <laughs> if you are interested in the training class, you can stay at home and do it. Okay. You can learn this career at home. All yeah. right. So Liz, take it away. Okay. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about this ugly 1003. I don't know how many of you have already had an opportunity to work with this document, but it was um, effective January, but everyone, all lenders had to start using it no later than March 1st. Any loans that were, were originated on or after March 1st have to use the new 1003. Now, I will tell you, I've spoken with a few of my mortgage uh, colleagues, and we've come to the conclusion that this application was created in somebody's boardroom, you know, where the executives are sitting there making decisions without taking the end user into consideration. Because when I tell you this thing is ugly, it's ugly. But as a notary, you know, before we had four or five pages of the, of the loan application, but the borrowers were signing in two or three or four or five different places. With this little ugly thing, they're, they're only signing one time, no more than twice, depending on how it's set up. And they're initialing once, maybe twice, depending on how it's set up. But it's, it, is, it can be as many as 30 pages. And that's what I have seen. So, you know, we talk about the number of pages that we have in our, our signing appointments. Well, this just added to it. This has just added to the number of pages that we have to print. But anyway, what I wanted to start with is the loan application is where the borrower's story is captured. That's, this is where they tell the loan officer has to capture the information in order to tell the borrower's story. You know, it's like, they have to look at the entire story to see, you know, their financial story, their, the, all of their personal information is out there. Now we're going to look at each section. We're going to review each section of the loan application. And we're just going to go through and talk about a little bit about what's in each section. And then we're actually going to look at the, uh, the loan application itself. All right. So we as notaries, we're looking for what we need to, to ensure that the borrower is, in, is uh, initialing, dating, and signing, all right? That's basically all we are responsible for. So why is it important that we go through this loan application? In my opinion, it's important that we go through this loan application 
to make sure that we are familiar with where the information is in this loan document in the event the borrower might say, even though it's their application, uh, this may be the first opportunity that they've had to look at it. So you want to be able to point to where certain, a certain, um, where certain information is in this loan application. You also must be able to point to where they need to initial and where they need to sign. And even though with this ugly application, this new application, they're only signing one time, they're only initialing one time, maybe twice, you still need to know how to tell them to get to that, okay? So, and also this is uh, interactive. We've got a lot of people on here this evening, but the way I train is I take questions when they come up. Uh, rather than asking you to hold your questions to the end. Um, if we become somewhat bombarded, then we might have to say hold the questions to allow me to get through the presentation. But for the most part, please ask your questions uh, as you have them. We are asking that you keep your, um, keep your, um, you stay on, you only bring yourself off mute if you're going to speak. Is that okay? Raise your hand so I, I know because we don't want everyone speaking at once. So if you can raise your hand, then I can kind of manage it better. Okay. Oh, now. Stephanie already got a hand up. <laughs> okay. What's okay, your Stephanie first and then Kenyatta. Stephanie? All right, Kenyatta, what's your question? Okay, maybe they were just checking to make sure their hands. Oh, she said, never mind. Okay, go ahead. Okay, now for this application and for this story, there are four parts to the story. And the lenders refer to this as the four C's of lending. And of course, we've got credit, and that's the borrower's willingness to repay a loan. The capacity to repay the loan based on the amount of the loan and the stability of the income. Uh, the capital, where is the investment in the property coming from? They have to make sure that they're sourcing uh, the funds. You know, the, the funds have to be, you know, you can't just run out and get some money from somebody and, and say, I got my down payment. The money's got to be sourced. And typically it's gotta be in the bank for about 90 days or so. The collateral, they're looking at the property. Is this property going to appraise for the value um, of the amount that you're requesting for a loan? So those are the four C's of the story that the lender is looking at in order to determine the, uh, whether or not they will loan money to an individual. So what's in this loan application? Section one is the borrower's information, the personal information, basically what we've just talked about, you know, their name, their type of credit. Uh, now, there are some major changes to uh, the way this is set up. So you pay uh, particular attention because um, this is one of the major changes. You know, the marital status is important, current address. Then we move on to 1B. You know, what's the employment? You know, what's the income? Uh, do you have additional income? Previous employment, if you've not been on your job for more than two years. And do you have income from other sources, uh, such as child support, alimony, so forth and so on, that you want to count as a qualifying feature for your loan? Then in section two is where your financial information is housed and it's dealing with your assets. How much money do you have? How much uh, other cr credit do you have? Then how much is a liability? You know, how much do you owe on those credit cards? How much do you owe uh, for, um, for um, car loans, things like that? And then if you have any other liabilities and or expenses, any questions? Okay, section three, financial information, your real estate information, 
you know, do you own other properties? Uh, if you do, what are the, tell us about those properties. Are you getting rent from it? How much do you get? We will count a certain amount. It used to be about 75% uh, of rental income that would be counted uh, towards income because they're keeping that 25%. They won't count that 25% because that goes for like making sure you've got money for maintenance and things of that nature. Then of course, we look at the property uh, when we're putting together this uh, qualifying for this loan. So the property information. So what is the, what is the information on the property? Uh, are, what are you buying? Are you refinancing? Are there any subordinate liens? For instance, subordinate liens would be let's say any second mortgages on the property, it would be any down payment assistance on the property, things of that nature. Then of course, we're, we're dealing with that rental income that I mentioned and uh, the gifts and grants, which is your down payment assistance type money. And you guys, since I'm mentioning down payment assistance, as you guys are out there signing, make sure you're looking at your documents. And if you happen to run across a, a, a package and then all of a sudden you see another deed or you see another note, or if you see something that says TDHCA or something like that, and it's another package, that is considered a second loan. It's down payment assistance. When you get that, you're actually closing two loans. So what I do is when I have a down payment assistance, if it's more than one page, because some down payment assistance can be one page. So if I've got more than one page, I'm charging an additional fee for that second loan. If I've got to go through, and down payment assistance are a little bit different, you know, whereas we're only responsible for identifying our signers, making sure that they are signing in the appropriate place, making sure they're dating in the appropriate place, making sure that we are notarizing, we're doing our notarial certificates correctly, you also have to make sure that on a down payment assistance, it takes a little more time and you have to have to explain a little bit more sometimes. So if you find yourself in that situation with a down payment assistance, reach out to somebody to get some help with what you're supposed to do because you are the last line of defense. This is the beginning of this process. Guess what? You're the end. You're the end. Who are they going to remember? They're going to remember the end, how smoothly that process went. Okay, I went down a rabbit hole. So let me bring myself back and get back to this application. Okay, section five, the declarations. It's going to be this property. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the declarations, you're making certain declarations about the property and the money that you're getting for this loan. You're making declarations about your finances. In section six, whole lot of acknowledgements and agreements that the borrowers are doing. And most of these acknowledgements and agreements are also shown in some of the, um, some of the disclosures that the borrowers are signing, okay? The borrower signature, an additional borrower signature, so that's that's a part of section six, okay? Section seven deals with military service. Section eight is the demographic information. Previously, the demographics information was not a part of the loan application. That was a separate sheet. Well, now it's a part of your application. So just keep that in mind. Okay, section nine is the loan originator's information. Then you've got an unmarried addendum. And this too used to be a separate sheet, a separate document in your package. Well, now it's made a part of your package or your loan package. However, it's still somewhat separate and only used if you have unmarried borrowers. Any questions so far? All right, then you got the lender information and it's just going through 
what the lender needs in order to get the loan sold on the secondary market. But that too is a part of your application now. I really don't remember, uh, it, before it was just a little blurb at the bottom uh, of the application. Now they got their whole thing. So you, as I mentioned, you could conceivably end up with 30 plus pages for the application, depending on the number of borrowers. It ain't pretty. So here's your application. And what I've done is just to highlight what's important to us as a notary. This first part that, oops, move. This first part that's outlined here, type of credit. This is gonna be checked. It's gonna be checked to tell you type of credit. And I wish I could blow this up to make it bigger, but this is the best way I could get this thing on here. But type of credit, it said, the first box says, first circle says, I am applying for individual credit. The second one says, I am applying for joint credit. And it says total number of borrowers, two. Each borrower intends to apply for joint credit. Your initials. Well, only the first borrower is going to initial in this block. If you have an additional borrower, they're going to have their own application. Whereas before the application was set up where the uh, borrower was, primary borrower was on one side, the co-borrower was on the other side. Now they each have their own application. So only your primary borrower, your first borrower, is going to initial in this block. Does that make sense? Yes. I thought I'm going to yes, take that to mean yes. <laughs> okay, then you see down here where I have this highlighted? You see there's a per the borrower's names are down here. What you have to do with that is to make sure that the borrowers do not sign down there. They will automatically, they see their name at the bottom of this page. They want to automatically go down there and sign. So you want to make sure that they do not sign at the bottom. Remember on these new applications, they're basically initialing one time or twice if it's two people because you got they got their own sig they got they have their own initial block on their individual application. They do not sign there at the bottom. So basically this is just going through the information that I've gone I went through earlier about what's on the application. And you just need to know that there's information there. Um, in the event, somebody says, well, what about this? What about that? Because most times when they've done their application, they've done it online and they haven't seen the application in its, in its printed form. This will be the first time that they will have seen this application. But you see, I'm already up to page seven, but I'm just gonna pause here for a second. And then we're gonna look at it's like about the property and your money for this loan. Remember, we talked about uh, where the money comes from, so forth, and they're making all kinds of certification about their finances in this section. You as a notary, you don't really care, but it's good because sometimes when they decide they're gonna sit there and read that application, you want to know what they're looking at, okay? And look, finally, we're on page eight. And that's where the borrowers are going to sign. Your borrower and your additional borrower will sign on this line. Now we already said, we have two borrowers, right? You haven't gotten to a point yet where the second borrower has initialed anything. It's because it's on another form and they pretty much start over. From what I understand from MGIC, what they do and what makes it makes these applications so long is the information they pull from the credit report anyway. So if it's a joint, uh, if it's a joint application, they've tried to merge the credit, the joint credit, so it does not appear twice. All right, y'all. So it's 
they're still working on it, but I'm tell I, I I would imagine they're still working on it. I don't know that. They should be, but they should be getting a lot of feedback now about the usability of this application. Uh, <clears throat> because um, it's supposed to be easier when you're inputting the information. From what I've heard, that's not the case. It's supposed to be better when the loan is sold on the secondary market uh, for the investors. I don't know. I don't know because it was effective March 1st. Few loans have probably already gone to investors to be onboarded. So they don't know yet that this ain't working. Well, I shouldn't say that. I don't know that it's not working, but it's cumbersome. It's very cumbersome. That's all I'm saying. So then after they sign, you're still dealing with paper. Now you're on, on page nine. And this is where the military service and the demographics information is shown. Remember, previously the demographics information was a separate sheet. They've now combined that on this application. And then <clears throat> next is the lender information that I mentioned. The loan origination information starts in section nine. You don't care about that but it's a part of your application and it is a page that you've got to make sure it printed with your application. Other than that, you as the notary, you don't, that's not something that you want to concern yourself with. You just want to make sure that you have all pages of that application, which leads me to this lender, uh, lender loan information form. You see how <clears throat> we got to page 11, and then it starts over page one. This is still a part of your application that must be included because it's for the, it is for the lender, but it's got to be a part of your, your loan application. So that's two pages that you've got to make sure you've got. So now what are we up to, 13 pages? Yeah, then we're up to 14 pages because now here's that unmarried addendum. This too, as I mentioned before, used to be a separate form. And a couple of years ago, when this form first started showing up, it was, it was for the purpose of silver unions, like for people who have alternative lifestyles. And <clears throat> that was a primary reason for this form. They've adjusted this form a little bit, and now it is inclusive of people who are uh, single, and let's say it is it is um, uh, boyfriend girlfriend who are buying a property together, but they have separate credit, they have separate finances. This form is also used for that now. So, but if you see down here, it still does have civil union, domestic partners, uh, so forth, and so on. And this is based on. Not only that, but the requirements for lending to unmarried people in your state. The state has certain guidelines that are followed as well. Again, you don't have to worry about whether or not the form is supposed to be there basically based on state guidelines. You just know that it's there. And previously, the borrowers had to sign this form. They had to check a box and sign the form. Now the lender is doing that for them. So you just have to make sure that again, you're that you're capturing all of the pages that are in the application. Okay. So can, I, can we can we have a can we do a question real quick? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um the question in the chat is has this info been updated with NNA, the new documents? Um I should have checked that, but I, I don't know. Somebody go Google real quick and see if, if did I say this was this was interactive? Everybody participate, did I say that? <laughs> you didn't say we all had to teach the class. <laughs> I don't know if it's been updated with NNA, because let me tell you, I struggled with trying to get this application in a format that I could show it to you. Uh, so I, I didn't have time to do that. 
Um, I know that MGIC is now teaching it. I'm not sure that NNA would necessarily have anything specific to this loan document uh, because it's not like they teach loan documents. They do have their source book, uh, which has an application in it, but I doubt that they're going to update that source book just yet. And we will continue to see some of the old applications probably until, I'd say for the next 60 days or so, because all of the loans that are in the pipeline, um, you know, probably from 60, 90 days ago, have to go through, um, get clear the pipeline, and then you won't see any of the old applications anymore. So I don't know whether or not NNA, I'm gonna say they haven't because usually they'll issue a bulletin and I've not seen a bulletin come from them. And those bulletins come in my email and I've not seen one. But I bet you they're working on doing something. I'm just not sure what. Can't, Miss Kathy, what are you putting in the screen? You know, there's a hundred of us. So <laughs> I, I'm the, probably the only one that saw that. <laughs> what, what we got? I don't know. She was showing something in the screen. Oh. You can come off mute. No, she says it's not updated. Okay, good. I didn't think so, but it's always good to double check. It's always good to double check. Now, <coughs> I want you <coughs> I want you to keep in mind that the 1003, which is called the your uh, the URLA sometimes and it's a uniform residential loan application. It's basically standard. There will be some variations based on the individual lenders and the investors. For instance, the 1003 is a form that is typically used. It's a Fannie Mae form, but there's also a Freddie Mac form, which is referred to as a URLA 65. And that's just, you know, you'll see that at the bottom of the page and it's just, <coughs> telling us, you know, where the form was, um, was created, who created the form. Uh, like I said, there was a bunch of executives sitting there at the, at the Fannie Mae office who decided that this would be a good idea without taking into consideration the end user. That, but the, here again, that is just my opinion. That is my opinion. So, okay. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, Miss, uh, Jones, I was told if there are is joint, no initials are required, only if it is one borrower and initial is required. Can we review that again, please? Yes, ma'am, we can. Um, because I can assure you that if there are two borrowers, you're going to have a second form, like right here, only your first borrower. This is borrower number one. The, your number one borrower is going to initial here. Then there is a separate form, just like this one, that will have type of credit. I am applying for joint credit. That's where your second borrower is going to initial. Now, the first, I got to tell you, I got to be transparent. The first one of these things that I got I had both borrowers initial on this first page. Didn't come back to me. So I guess they said, oh, well, we, everybody's new at it. However, as I was going through it and I got to that second application and I started scratching my head, it's like, what on earth? And then I really had to study it to figure out that you actually have two different applications or partial applications when you have two borrowers. Now, I, I give you this. I say you always source your information. So what I'm telling you about this application is based on what I have done. I've done probably 10 of them in the last month or so. In addition to that, I did go look at what MGIC, MGIC is an, is an investor and they had a little training class on the 
uh, loan application. So it's based on what, you know, what they said has to happen with, uh, with this, um, with the applications. Now, the person who told you that, uh, that told, gave you that information, ask them to show you where they, or tell you, so you can go look it up for yourself. It's always good to double check information, source your information. And I should have put on here that I used, I used my mortgage friends, um, <laughs> I used, uh, and I'll tell you, my mortgage friends are even Ruth Ann Cummings, who is an underwriter for a major uh, lender, Deborah Canada, who is also a major, she works for a major uh, corporation. And I also um, uh, touch bases with, as I said, the M uh, MGIC. So, but you go source your own information and make sure that it's giving you um, that they're giving you the right information. So you just gotta sit with this, this document for a minute. When you get it, just sit with it. And those of you who have not done any loans yet, those of you who are brand new notaries or whatever, you won't know what the old one looked like. So it's not going to, it, it's not going to be uh, a matter of you figuring out how to segue into uh, the new one. Uh, I will keep the old one in my training classes for now, It probably for the next 90 days, just to make sure all of the old applications have gone through uh, the pipeline. Uh, but I do show this new one in class as an addition, uh, just so we know what we are to do with it. And it's like, well, this is easy. It's simple. All you're doing is having them initial and sign one time. Where the problem comes in is that the way the application is set up, if you're not careful, if you're new, if you're rushing, you're not going to know where to tell them to go to initial. Every single one that I have done, I've had to direct those people to that, that little box there for them to initial. I've had to tell them if it's two of them, no, 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 you don't initial yet. Then we get to the signature page. They're both signing, but then we come back and the second person is now initialing on another page. Also, I mentioned at the beginning, you want to be cautious because each lender, they're, they, they're working the same application but their software may be set up a little bit differently. So some of this information may not be where you think it should be. The forms may not be in the same order. So just pay particular attention, just like we know in doing this business, reading is fundamental. You're going to have to read this document until you become more familiar with where the information is. So. It's not just for this document, but it's for any of them. Basically, our primary focus is to make sure that we are completing our notarial certificates correctly. Our primary focus is to make sure we have identified our signers appropriately to the best of our ability. And, and basically, you know, our job is, is done except you've got to guide people through. We are going to guide our customers to where they need to sign and make sure that they are signing in the appropriate place. That was a lot. Did I go down the rabbit hole? A little bit, but it's okay. You came back. We have a question in the chat. How should signing agents go about lenders that have instructions that are geared towards the old form? I did one last night that the instructions to be initialed at the bottom of each page page old form. Yes. Okay. Here again, we are also, I just said our basic duties are this, but we're also problem solvers. So you know that those instructions, say everybody's trying to catch up, you might say. So some of those instructions are going to be old. So you have to be a problem solver there. And you're looking at this new form you're looking at the instructions, which is telling you to initial at the bottom. Well, guess what? 
depending on the software that a lender is using, there may be an initial on each page of these documents. There, that could happen. I've not seen it, but it could happen. So what you would want to do is to do um, some, mm -hmm. do some, yes. some, some. Um, <laughs> Come on, you got it, you <laughs> <stop>. got it. <laughs> You'd have to, yeah, you know, do some, some uh, critical thinking. That's what I was looking for. You have to do some critical thinking. And it's like, okay, well, that doesn't match. And then if you're totally confused about what, you know, the, the, the difference in the instructions and what you're looking at, you will pick up the phone and you will call your hiring company and say, hey, this document says this, but my instructions say this. What do you want me to do? But do some critical thinking as far as that's concerned, because it's not just in this loan application that you will sometimes find conflicting instructions. It could be on anything, mm -hmm. especially that signature name affidavit, which is one of the things we're going to go through um, coming up this, this month. So you have conflicting information, you clarify. If you cannot think through it, you call. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Not yet. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, guess what? We we're done. Woo, yes. Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer, why were you so excited about us being done? I saw you. I saw you. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> hey, Jennifer. <laughs> but, well, Everybody calm down. Uh, that's, that's it. So um, if there are no questions on this application, are there any other questions, you know, notary related that we may be able to help you with this evening? You see how I threw out that notary related. Right. <laughs> We're not going to ask you what products you're using in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> you're too funny. You're too funny. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, we're going to say y'all have a great evening and do stay tuned. Oh, I do have something else. Of course you do. House Bill 1959. For you who are not familiar with House Bill 1959, that's where we are asking for more money yes. for the state of Texas. Give us some more money. Well, we have just, oh, Tamika, I yes. sent you the uh, the link. Can you pull that up? Mm, mm, mm. Um, but we're asking for more money. And we went to, to the Capitol last month we went to the house and it was passed unanimously for us to get a raise. Awesome. Now it's now going to the Senate. So we need to do the same thing all over again. We need to start calling our state senator. And I have put it on YouTube and it will be on Facebook. It's a list of all the senators. You need to find your senator uh, and, and start calling them, start emailing them. I've already sent my first email asking for my money. I want my money. So we deserve it. We work hard. We are essential. We need our money. We deserve this raise. And I asked her to pull it up because I keep this on my watch and I look at it every day to see what's happening. Well, as you can see, the last action was today. It was today and it went to the calendar. So they're getting ready to uh, put it on the calendar for it to go to the hearing in the Senate. Y'all be ready. And I'm just hoping that it's not going to happen while I'm out of town, because I want to go back to the Capitol. It's so pretty down here, y'all. 
I was in awe. Yeah, but she was so excited, y'all, when we were down there. She was just so excited. And when when it came out today, she called me. It, it's on the calendar. It's on the calendar. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, she is excited like, about the $10. <laughs> I, I am. I am. Because we deserve it. So all Texas notaries, help us. Help us figure out, you know, help us to, <coughs> if you can, Go to Meet Austin. There. Yes, we, yeah. there was only you, six of us there. <laughs> For it to be half a million notaries in Texas, there was only six of us that went to Austin to, you know, speak about how we need a pay raise. And it's been over 26 years since we've had one. So it's time. So if you can put it, you know, if you can make it, if you know someone that can make it, please, let's, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's power in numbers. Power it in really numbers. really is. Power in numbers for sure. And it was an all day thing. And I thought we were going to be well, on first. Now, you I, don't have I, to tell them that. We got to get them there first. <laughs> oh, I fell asleep, y'all. And then they told me that I, I was sitting on the front row, too. I just got to be transparent. I fell asleep. I was tired. I'm an old lady. Well, anyway, so, but when they said House Bill 1959, I perked she up. woke up. She woke and then up. I thought, well, I got time because I was the last one to register. So I have time to collect myself before I have to get up and speak. How about they call me first? I pulled it off them. I did it. Gigi said she want to go. Yay! <laughs> well, I'm just hoping that I'm just hoping that it doesn't happen while I'm out of town. But and if it's if it if it happens while I'm out of town. I know that there are enough of you who are going to go to represent. If you can't go, you can also uh, do it on Zoom. They had several people for different uh, bills and they testified on Zoom. So just make it somehow, whether you're in person or on Zoom. Yes, yes, please, please do that. So anyway... Um, is, is there anything else? <clears throat> no, looks like we're going to get out of here early. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for sharing a part of your evening with us. And we love being able to bring you valuable information that's helping you to get, uh, helping you to be the best that you can be. Also, if we are going to do some documents uh, for a little while. So if there's a particular document that's giving you heartburn and you would like for us to go through it, just give us a, give us a shout out and let us know. Email us and let us know. And we'll see if we can put that on the, on the schedule to go through. Let's see. How can we get noticed and get work? What are the best? I, that went away too quick. What was that question, Mika, about somebody getting work? I'm sharing my screen. I'm not looking at the chat. Okay, so let me go look to see if I can find uh, Dahomey asked the news as a new signing agent, how can we get noticed and get work? What are the best platforms to get on? Oh my, ooh, ooh, oh my. Um, well, to get noticed. Now, personally, I like SnapDocs. I'm on the SnapDocs platform, and that's where I get 95% of my work. And the other thing is, you just get you some lists of signing services, title companies, and you start marketing to them. You start reaching out to them. You create your own list. This, this business, <clears throat> oftentimes, one may think that it's easy uh, because there's so many of us. This is not easy, you guys. It's lucrative. It can be very lucrative if you work it. And the thing about it is you've got to work it and not let it work you. You've mm -hmm. got to work smart. You've got to have your foundation, which means you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know your notor notorial laws. And you've got to know how to present these documents. When you, so it's it's about getting the business, but it's also about maintaining the business once you get it. Now, if you're just in this for the short run, and you're like, hey, I'm just making me a little extra money, and then I'm out of here. 
that may be a mistake that if you think that you can go and just do this business part time without having the proper training, you still need to know what you're doing, um, even if you are on a part time basis. And you say, I'm just part time. I'm not paying for any training. That's OK. Train yourself. However, know how to train yourself. There's a lot of information that's on YouTube. Just make sure that the training you're looking at is the right thing for you. And then you train yourself and you go do it. Uh, your learning curve is longer, but it can be done. It can be done. So, and somebody, uh, Santa Jones, if I miss somebody, I, don't know, I am on Snap Docs and Verify, but no work. Do I need to add companies? What do you mean do you need to add companies? Now, uh, when you say you're on Snap Docs, you're not getting any work, make sure your Snap Docs is on. Oftentimes, we are, we're not set up correctly. Make sure that you're set up correctly on NNA. Oftentimes, people forget to opt in on NNA. And then they also, one of the other things that happens is where it shows, do you accept eDocs? Uh, people are saying no because they think that they're talking about electronic sig uh, 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 RON. That's not what that is. So I would I would offer that you go check your uh, NNA set up. Make sure that you're opted in. Make sure that you say yes to you can accept eDocs. Then you want to go to your snap docs and make sure that you are are on your um your uh, it, it's a your your it's a on button on or off or whatever just make sure all of that is done correctly and then if you're not getting anything at all i would say take a look at how your profile is set up i posted something a couple weeks ago uh, that came from, I forget, I think Laura Brewer or NNA or somebody about how to put together an effective profile. Go look at that. Or you know what? If you don't want to go through the Facebook thing, use old Google. Google and say, uh, to ask for samples of uh, notary profiles. I bet you're going to get something. The other thing about getting business, are you set up on Google? How are people going to find you? Uh, are you are you registered with, uh, what's that other one, Mika? Um, uh, Google and uh, do you, do you have a web? Well, Tamika doesn't, she doesn't think that a website is, is important. You don't have to put me on blast on this, on this. Signing one. order. Huh? Oh, yes. Sign, signing, signing order. order. Signing, signing order. order definitely. Definitely. Now, signing orders.com, does that not come through NNA? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. But I'm not anyway. sure, but they're, but they're pretty, <laughs> they, they send you some work. Uh-huh. Mm. Who asked, now, I forgot. Now, who asked that question? Was that the homie? Jo Santa Jones answered, I uh, asked it. Oh, um, we, have, we have another one. We have a few more. Um, can you log your work in Snap Docs or is it better to use Notary Gadget? Okay, that's a personal thing. Um, you know, you decide how best to track your work. Uh, a lot of people use Notary Gadget. I do not. I use Snap Docs uh, for my tracking purposes. Because as I mentioned earlier, 98% of my work comes from Snap Docs. So I don't need to go create or buy another platform to put that in. However, the, the, um, the signings, uh, signings that I get that are not coming from Snap Docs, I add them to Snap Docs. So I've got all of my stuff in one place. But that's going to be a personal choice for you as far as how you want to operate your business. Okay, are your training state specific? I'm in Texas as well. My classes are pretty much, especially the Notary 101, as far as the uh, laws, they are state uh, specific and that's 
learning about the laws, the uh, Texas state laws, and what you can and cannot do with that stamp. In Notary 101, we also talk about how else you can use that stamp to make money. Uh, the workshop, uh, the document, the loan documents, although you will see a lot of Texas, uh, you know, the heading will say Texas, most of your documents are pretty standard, pretty universal. So they are pretty much the same documents. You might find that in some states, there are additional documents. For instance, the state of California, uh, the state of Ohio, the state of Illinois. This, I'm thinking about the waterways. Where you have water, there are extra documents as it relates to uh, waterways and things like that. So, but pretty much just like your 1003, the documents that are in your loan packages are pretty standard from state to state. It's, it may be that they just put a little twist on the title to let you know, hey, you're in Illinois today. So pretty universal. When is the next notary one-on-one? -on -one? 101. I, I want to say one-on-one -on -one all the time. It's 101. Okay. Um. Well, you answered, June we just 5th. did one, we just it's did June one today. 5th. Oh, June the next 5th. one is okay. June 5th. Yes, I was just messing with you. Oh, you were messing um, with me. What's a good platform for Ron? Huh? Oh. Okay. You got me on that one. However, again, I do not do Ron. I do not intend to do Ron. Uh, I am not technologically savvy savvy enough to do run however all of you who intend to make this your business you need to get savvy with run honey i'm 69 years old anybody that i mean if i'm gonna work maybe another three five years depend you know but i'm not gonna do run because anybody that I'm going to do, they're going to be like me. They're not, they don't want to deal with Ron. They want some paper. And in addition to that, reverse mortgages and cash outs. They ain't going to Ron. I could do those. Now, with that being said, I want to expose you guys to as much information as possible. So was it last week or the week before? We had... Um, we had an e-notary person um, on here. Tamar and, Jackson. Huh? Tamar Jackson. Tamar is, Jackson. Yeah, and what is Ron? It's remote online notary. Yeah. So, that's what it was. So you can go to YouTube and watch what she said. And we're also working on getting her back along with another person who will talk to you about the remote online notarization. But I am traditional. I am traditional notary uh, and traditional notary training, which is another thing. You need to know how to do the traditional stuff before you start trying to do run. And one of the things that is a problem if you're not technologically savvy is that what they were saying in the group last week was about how you as a notary you could end up spending hours on the phone uh, or, or, you know, you got some of them got to do them on Zoom or however you're doing it because you have to help the customer by telling them to click on this icon, click on that icon. Honey, we would never get through it if I were doing that because I'd be looking at, <laughs> no, look, I'd be saying, what's the icon? No, but seriously, you've got to be able to you got for, so you don't want to be stuck with a situation where you don't know what you're doing with the documents, you don't know how to do a notarial certificate. On top of that, you're trying to teach somebody or you're trying to guide someone through the program to get them um, what is identified to get there, and then you have people who got who will put in their wrong information like their birth date they forget what what day they were born on well then you got to try to tell them that birthday didn't work are you sure that's your birthday she's throwing shade y'all that was me that was me it was a typo it was a typo 
Yeah. <laughs> Good. Tamika, uh, Daphne wants our YouTube page. I already you... put it in there. Um, oh, I see it. I see it. Thank you. Yes. Okay, Ron, yes, is in Texas. Um, Miss Gaines, I heard in face in a Facebook group that most signing services have tier levels. And if you get training with a nationally recognized training, you get placed higher on the list. Is this true? Ooh, somebody else want to answer that question? Not necessarily. This is Gigi. Yeah, is, there you what, go. Who's sharing? Pam, we see your screen. Stop sharing. <laughs> Thank you. Pam. I'm gonna say, oh, sorry, not necessarily because you know, at the end of the day, you have to do the work, you have to market yourself, and just because you know, there's one that says, oh, you know, if you're one of our graduates, you know, you'll be considered for X, Y, and Z. You'll automatically be added X, Y, and Z, and and that may be true to some extent, but you know. The truth be told is, you know, when you're new and starting out, no one knows who you are, you know, and you just have to work to build those uh, relationships. relationships and network. And also, when you get the you get the notices, like Gigi just said, somebody's telling you, okay, you pay me uh, this $15, this $29, this $39.99, and I'm going to put you at the top of the list. Well, how many people did they tell they were going to put at the top of the list? Right. Everybody. Everybody can't be at the top of the list. Do your legwork. Build your foundation. You know, instead of um, it, 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 invest in yourself. And when I say invest in yourself, that's about investing not just your money to get trained, but also your time. You want to invest in your time. You want to make sure that you're building a solid foundation. Invest in yourself. Study. It's just like y'all came on here tonight to learn a little something, something. Awesome. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Just keep learning. Learning is continuous. And another thing I want to say too, you know, a lot of those classes, you know, where you're paying and you're going to, everybody's going to be at the top of the list. A lot of those classes are pre-recorded videos. And one thing I definitely like about Ms. Liz and EC Head consulting classes is that, you know, of course, right now with the COVID situation, we can't meet in person, but it is via a live Zoom call. You know, they provide the documents, you print them out. And you're actually on that Zoom call with other participants going through those documents together. And, and to me, that is just so valuable. And you can ask questions. And, and you know, with these ones that are pre-recorded, you know, you got a question, where do you go? You know, it's not live. Thank you, Gigi. I'm gonna send you a check later for that. <laughs> my my, uh, my affiliate, my affiliate check. Thank you, Miss Liz. <laughs> but the other thing is, um, what she was saying about we're on Zoom. I think Tamika mentioned that when we first started, we pivoted to Zoom last April. And let me tell y'all, I messed up so many times because. Did I tell you I'm not technologically sound? Uh, yeah, you know, savvy. But not sound. savvy, 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 <laughs> savvy. But I'ma tell you, I did not think I would like Zoom because I am a classroom trainer. I want to reach out and touch people, you know? So it's been hard on me not to reach out and touch you. You know, it's just like when I was playing a little music at the beginning, I might come into the classroom doing a dance. Can't dance, got no rhythm. But I am a classroom trainer who pivoted to Zoom. I love Zoom now. And I will go back to the classroom 2022. I'm not going back until 2022. Uh, but, and I've got to figure, but not all classes will go to the classroom. Probably just the workshop one, which is the, the, the documents, because I want you in, in the classroom and on even, even though we're on Zoom, you've got the documents in front of you. And, and I'm saying, you know, fill out this form like this, and then you stamp it. But see, I can't see what you're doing. 
But in class, I'm walking around. You know how the test proctors we walk? Well, not they probably don't do that anymore, I think. But I'm watching what you're doing. And then also for class on Zoom, you gotta keep the camera on because I gotta be able to see you. So if you're falling asleep, I can make you get up and dance. But anyway. But yeah, and after class is over, we do, I'm here. In fact, somebody just called me. They got their first one tomorrow. So what I do is I work with you on that, on those first few signings to get you comfortable. And then I do uh, group coaching, like 90 days, is it 60 days? 60, 60 days after your month of training. That ain't caught on yet. People just, you know, we send the email out and say, hey, join us on this Zoom uh, for your free coaching. Everybody say, I want to be coached. I want to mentor. For your free coaching and mentoring. Try that twice. How many people have shown up? Not one. But then they call me individually. Hello. They just want that one-on-one -on -one touch, you know. They <laughs> want to be love, spoiled a I little bit. I love doing that. So anyway, any other questions? Oh, you get so excited. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, yes, does Service Link take newbies? You know, everybody, and I, this right. is my opinion, everyone has been new at, one at point. some point. So when you say, will Service Link take new people? I don't know. I don't work with Service Link, but I'm also not new. But <clears throat> somebody tell, who asked that question? Let me see. Jay No. Jay No? Jay No. Jay No. Jay no. John knows. Oh, it's John. Me. Hey, John. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. How are you? Uh, now, would somebody like to tell Jay No? What needs to happen when you are a newbie in order to get that business? Jacqueline Clinton, I believe, placed something regarding service link, and I was hoping that she would probably chime in. They might have, you know, disconnected. I'm here. Hi, Miss Liz. This is Jackie. You spoke to me yesterday. You Hi, gave Jackie. me Roxanne's number. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you. She did take it and she ended up getting two assignments instead of one. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jacqueline Clinton and I'm with Notary on the Move. I've been in the business a little bit over 20 some years and I did post service link in the, in the chat because they do accept new people. How long, depending on, I guess how long you've been in, I think it may be six months or something okay. like that. But if you have work to show the companies that you work with and the ones that you did signings for, they have a paper application that you actually have to fill out. So put all your information on that paper application. Another reason that I mentioned them is because they have an app that you can put on your phone. And when you finally get accepted and get approved through them, then you download the app and the app will automatically assign you loans. So therefore you're not fighting for loan signings. When they assign those loans to you, those are yours to either do or, or decline. And you will have your, you have your own app downloaded and you accept them on the app, you know, whenever they come in. Um, I put the link in the chat and also their web address. And I actually put the instructions in there where you go to sign up at. I would still say sign up uh, if they don't accept you. At least they would tell you, hey, come back in three months or come back when you have six months. And then you keep that on your calendar. And when that time comes, you sign up again and send them all your information. Either way, they will still have your application on file. So you won't have to do that again. In six months, you call them back and say, hey, my name is Joe. I applied with you three months ago or whatever the case may be. I want to update my profile. You told me to call back in six months. And, you know, then you will have your own signings instead of having to fight on Snapdocs and on other places in order to get signed. Um, yeah, another thing that I wanted to announce, and I don't know if Miss Liz knows her, you know, Melissa Eldridge Johnson? Have you ever heard of her? She's in Dallas, in the Mansfield area. 
but she actually does NEMA, which is a remote online uh, training. And you guys can look her up on Facebook or either on the internet. And she actually provides the wrong class. I don't know how much it is. I don't know the details of it, but she's actually the one that created the first run online conference, which happened, what, last month. So check those things out. And, you know, I'm here if you have any questions. My name is Jacqueline Clinton, and I'm with Notary on the Moon. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say Jacqueline uh, called me yesterday because um, she was looking for a notary in, uh, well, actually, she called to see if I would go to Burles, and I will not. But here's what our community is all about. We're building, you know, if you're part of our community, we don't want to just say, when someone calls us for help, we don't want to say, no, I can't do it and move on. But what I like to do, because I've trained over 300 notaries, i got to have somebody who's in an area somewhere, which might be beneficial. So I'll give, I gave Jacqueline uh, a person I've trained who is in the Burleson area. And what she just said was that uh, uh, Roxanne was able to accommodate her, which is great. So we want to be able to, uh, we want to be able to, um, support each other. You know, what I like to say is we have a training community. We have a training community. So we all support each other. We learn from each other. None of us know it all. And we just we just have to support each other through this, uh, through this process. Now, which also uh, 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 reminds me that <clears throat> Jacqueline, you were going to send me your email address so I could send you a list of notaries I've trained who I know are actively working. And that's yes. a list of, of about, that's a list of about probably, I got to update it, but probably a list of about 40 people. Because, you yes. know, not everybody who goes into this notary, they stick, they don't stick with it. They do it for a minute, then they decide, uh-uh, this ain't for me. But I know I have a list of about 40 people who are actively working. But see, you got to work it. You got, this is not, it's not going to just fall in your lap. And anybody who tells you, hey, we've been so busy, girl, you got to go do this. Well, you got to do something and you got to be prepared. You've got to be prepared when the loan signings slow down. They slowed down from last year. So people are, are freaking out because there isn't as much business. Well, that was unusual. That was because of COVID. So now it's leveling off. Well, guess what, guys? <clears throat> when the interest rates <clears throat> increase, it's going to go down even more. So number one, you want to position yourself so that you are the one that they will keep calling because there will always be some closings. You want to be the one that they keep calling when the interest rates go up and the signings go down. In addition to that, number two, do not sleep on general notary work. You want to balance your, your, your general notary work with your loan signing so that when loan signings go down, the general notary work is going to keep you going. Then you say, but how can I make money with $6 a signature? There are ways. We tell you how. Uh, Jennifer, you want to tell them how to make some money with um, with general notary work, I caught her sleeping. <laughs> Miss Leah. Oh my God, I think you're talking to me. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I won't put her on the spot like that, but it's with your convenience fees. Yes. So you just have to work it so that you're making money. In addition to that general notary work, you got one, two pages or whatever. You go and you make you $50, $60. It took you five minutes. Loan signings, you got $150, $200. I had one the other day that was 270 pages. You got to print that, print it twice. Then you got to go to the location. You're sitting with the people for an hour. Then you got to get back. Sometimes they want you to fax it. You've just spent three hours on that. Well, you could have gone and made you know, $60 on a general notary and been at the house. Miss Liz, yes, not me, not me, this Jackie. Uh -huh. I, uh, 
I was out today from, I know at least, mm, maybe 10, 9, 10 o'clock this morning. And I did general notary work all day yes. long. Um, I'm going to tell y'all, for, oh, for those of you that wanted to do Ron, check out Notarize. But what I will suggest is that if you are just starting, I suggest you do the general notary before you jump on Ron because Ron is very expensive um, as far as paying for your digital certificate, your seal, getting your, getting everything together. It's very expensive. Just doing my information, I'm an open book, just when it first started. I signed up with Doc Verify. I spent $300 on Doc Verify. And right now today, I don't even use Doc Verify. Mm. So I'm just saying, learn, you know, listen to Miss Leah because she's telling you the truth. And I'm, I keep preaching it to people. I know they get tired of hearing me. Go do your basics, learn your general because six months from now, a year from now, if you know your basics, you know your laws, you know your directs, you know your oaths, you know your acknowledgements, you know how to fill them out. On um, loan signing is going to be a breeze for you other than learning the documents because that's all you're doing is verifying the signatures and notarizing them on loan documents. But if you don't know how to fill out an oath or you don't know how to fill out a direct and you're sitting at the table taking pictures and asking people, oh, how do you do this? What do I feel here? That's, you shouldn't even be doing it. You shouldn't hear that shade? at the table. Mm -hmm. I just want, you should not hear that shade? Okay. I mean, it's, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm just telling the truth. I mean, there's people on Facebook taking pictures. I mean, I'm just being yes. honest. Yes. Um, Don't and I wouldn't ever do that. I encourage you guys not mm -hmm. to ever take a picture of a document, even if you think you have you have redacted that that borrower's information. I encourage you not to ever paste a, a post that on Facebook. That's a great way for you to lose your business by posting those documents. Now, what I do, Jacqueline, I didn't, I almost call you Jack, y'all don't know. Did that's you okay. No, that's fine. I mean, to cut you off, but it's it's like what I do with my, my, my people, my students, it's like if you got a question on a document, you can take a picture of it, but you're only sending it to me. You're not Correct. putting it on Facebook, and then I'm going to help you through. But right. yeah, y'all don't don't make Facebook lose help. Facebook will make you lose your commission. Mm -hmm. Facebook will make you mm -hmm. lose your business. The other thing since we're on Facebook, Jacqueline, is that I suggest that you do not go to Facebook and 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 bash uh, the signing services because you never know who's on there watching. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a good way for you to lose your business. And yes, sometimes they will make you mad. They will yeah. they will irritate you. Don't air it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, just call remember, me. just call me. <laughs> just remember, <laughs> just remember, Big Brother's always watching. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. um, in um, and another, and I'll give y'all another pointer. Um, Miss Liz was talking about um Google, you know, looking it up, doing your research. I'm going to tell y'all to look up litigation companies. The jobs, the two jobs that I gave to Ms. Roxanne yesterday were from attorneys from litigation companies. And it's general notary work. It was two simple, well, I think it's two simple documents that she go and she fill them out. She pick up the records, scan them back. And she's making what? That one job, I think, is going to be like $120 just for those two documents. Um, so get on the internet, look up litigation companies, look up attorneys, send them an email if you can get an email. If you can't get an email, call them and say, hey, my name is John. I'm a notary. I'm mobile. Um, I would like to be added to your prefer preferred vendors list. And if you have any signings or any notaries, I mean, any jobs in my area, please remember me and feel free to contact me. If they say, okay, then do that. Um, if you can't get anybody to respond, then call them. But I mean, that's how I got mine. And I mean, that's what I continue to do. And right now, the jobs that I gave Miss um, 
Roxanne, I'm working with a company out of Beaumont. And I mean, I'm not saying it, it didn't take, it doesn't take 25 years to do that. It just takes you to find one good client and be yeah. persistent and do a great job. And I promise you, you can do it. It is worth doing and you can make money with just doing general audit work. I enjoy it more than I do loan signings. I don't even do loan signings. Look at you all growing up with General Notary. Um, <laughs> LaShawn Littlejohn. I, I don't know if I missed anything, but she's asked, would you still need to take NNA's LSA class in addition to, to Miss Liz's uh, course? My course is continuing education. Uh, if you intend to work with um, signing services and, and most title companies, they will want you to be uh, NNA certified. In order to become NNA certified, it's just a little 30, I think it's about 30, 35 questions that you're going to answer. And you have a little, it's open book and they give you a video beforehand uh, for you to go through so that you know the answers to the questions that they're asking. And then, so yeah, you need to be NNA certified. Uh, Miss Liz, what's your take on we go look? What does that mean? <laughs> sometimes, let me tell y'all, I told y'all I'm old. And sometimes y'all put stuff out there and I don't know what it means because it's like, that's that young folk talk. Is oh that one goodness. of those things? It's, I don't think it's so. A, <laughs> it's a field inspection uh, company. Oh, it's we go like, look? Oh, yeah, field inspection? Like field inspections are either <laughs> auto vehicles where you go look at them. Okay. Take okay. Well, someone said they have low fees. So that's a no for me, dog. <laughs> but then, okay, it's a no for you right now. <laughs> See, here's the thing. You find some additional mm. streams of income and you keep an eye on mm. it because you never know when the tides will shift. Exactly. And it might be that, let me tell you when it's going to become more, where people are going to pay more for you to do it. Think about us coming out of COVID, them lifting the restrictions on the on the foreclosures and things of that nature. Then it's going to be there's going to be a greater need for field inspections because of the number of foreclosures that are happening. There's going to be a need for you know inspections for I don't know if they do inspections necessary for modification, but you're going to. Keep an eye on those things to, to be prepared when the tides turn and there's an opportunity there. In addition to that, you look at low fees because right now you can make this money on these loan signings. But again, if it's only $15, but it's two doors down from you, hey, walk two doors down, take your picture, go on back to the house. But that's what I'm saying. If you're not doing anything else, if you're not doing anything else. Um, uh, notary, notary runner. Notary runner, here again. That could fall under any kind of thing. Notary runner, you're running to uh, the notary. Tell me, tell me, be more specific. I believe that's a company. Is that a company? I've seen them before, yeah. Because a lot of those may very well just be like a courier service. You know how... You just go pick up documents. Like somebody may want you to go to the courthouse to pick up some um, some documents. Well, you're a notary runner. And you, a lot of things people will call a notary for, you really don't need to be a notary to do it. For instance, I-9. That for, People will call a notary to do an I-9, but you're not acting in the capacity of a notary when you're doing I-9s. So, whole lot of things. <clears throat> Process server, yeah. Do you want to know, has anybody had any experience with that? I, 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 I have not. Has anybody on here done anything with process serving? Natalie has. Okay. You want to tell us about that, Natalie? Quickly, Natalie, it's 819. I know. You weren't even complaining. We've gone over. I'm about to. Oh, well. that's why I was scared to do it. That gun pulled on me. Right Didn't there. I say that in our class this <laughs> you morning? Did. 
I you said did. that in my I class did. this morning. I'm not trying to get no gun pulled on me for somebody else's problem. Yeah, you did yeah, say that it was this about, morning. It was for child support. Um, I had to serve a young man for child support. And he pulled the gun on me and I told him, I'm so sorry. I think I got the wrong person. <laughs> I can get in my car and I'm going to turn around. That's it. And I told oh, the people right. their paperback. <laughs> Not give me that paperback. <laughs> Safety first. Safety first. Um, yes. But if you anybody who, who's interested in the process serving, again, we had a guy on. We bring, we try to bring uh, value to you, not just about what we do as a notary and so forth and so on. But we did, if you go to YouTube, there, uh, Martin Rentera. Martin Rentera did a process serving uh, service video and a private investigator video. So you can find that on our YouTube channel. Okay, uh, Natalie, are you looking at the chat? Someone wants you to have their number. Yes, ma'am, I have it. Okay, cool. Okay, I've seen it. Oh, I'm in Florida. But I'll, oh. I'll give you what information I can. Well, that's okay. You know, everything, um, because of the digital world we live in, um, you may be in Florida, but the company you're working for, you, you may have valuable information that can be used, um, you know, across state lines. Right. Okay. Well, thank y'all for joining us. <laughs> it's been wonderful. Um, if you are interested. Oh, wait a minute. Exactly. Wait a minute. Hello. Oh, that was private, Jennifer. I'm so sorry. I'm about to... Jennifer said it's time to eat, and I'm with her. Yes, it's time to eat. She, she already well, know it's it's time to eat. I did not I did not make my dinner before could, class this time. So yes, it's time to eat. Yes, ma'am. But could we at least answer Anna Chrome's Chrome's? Uh, what is I didn't see her. Could anyone advise on a type of printer to invest in, and what's the average cost? Where is it? It's oh. up there. Oh, the yeah. brother L H L L sixty two hundred D W T. You like that one? Yes, okay. I have that one, and I have another one that just sits. But the <laughs> sixty two hundred D W T is very fast. Um, now right now in the box. on Amazon, there's like. They're like 600, but if you catch them in the middle of the night, I had literally had to put my phone on um, alarm for like two, three o'clock in the morning sometimes, and I could catch it. I caught it for 300 and I want to say like $56 or something like that. Mm, good to See? know. Thank and you. I, and I'm an HP girl, so I have over here an HP Laser Jet Enterprise M506. Um, and then that's just my backup because a couple months ago I went to a lease of a, a bigger, a more, more, um, a bigger printer. See, you hungry too. <laughs> but uh, again, I'm going to invite you to go to YouTube and look at it's all about printers. And it's with the guy that I got my, my lease printer from. And whatever you get, though, and I also had that brothers that she's referring to, but whatever you get, make sure you get at least 40 pages per minute. Anything else is too slow for our business. Thank you. Oh, and one quick, one quick she, announcement. Natalie, she said we were done. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, this Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, you guys know, I don't know what they're called, but they're like um, these little things, and everybody has them in different states. In here in Florida, they have like these uh, places where you can go in and buy like microwaves and refrigerators and stuff like that for wholesale, but it's open to the public. I guess that's what it's called. Well, I just recently found one here in Florida, and they're paper. You can What's get the name of the company? Uh-huh. I don't know. It's just a warehouse. It's just like a warehouse. Sam's? No, 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 no. It's like a side place where you can go in and you can buy stuff and it's open to the public. They're just like warehouses with like a bunch of stuff in there. Oh, Max's. Is it Max? 
Ours I here is somebody mad. said it's public surplus. Well, <laughs> yeah, they're like a surplus. But what happened is that I actually went in one time and found a whole pallet of paper. Mm -hmm. And it was like 10 Ten dollars for the regular letter paper, and then fifteen dollars a box. And these were a box for the um, legal. Yep. Whenever you can find good deals on paper, you want to get the paper. Personally, I use hammer mill paper, and I catch it on sale. But it's typically like sixty-five dollars. But I typically uh, I can find it on sale. When I find it on sale for twenty-nine dollars, I buy several cases of it. And then the legal paper, I just use the staple brand. And, you know, the legal paper is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, Nellie, what part of Florida are you in? Inquiring minds want to know. Oh, I'm sorry. Jacksonville, Florida. We're going to drop by. We're going to do a drive by. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, no, I do not know what inspection company pays good. I just know the one that didn't. And that's why I'm not with them. You just, you know what, a lot of it is going to be trial and error. You well, know, I'm you not do going something, anywhere for $5. Yeah, you, you, you do something one time and then you don't. You know, and then also, uh, as far as your supplies are concerned, you know, sometimes you just have to Google that as well. I used to look at three sources all the time when I was buying supplies, buying my paper, buying my cartridges, so forth and so on. I used to look at three sources and then I determined what, you know, what's going to give me the best, um, the best. Uh, price for that you know at that particular time so you have to do some research mm -hmm. to find out what's going to work best for you now one more with that thing being said, wait 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 <clears throat> someone wants to know what the name of the brother printer was again oh they put it in the chat uh h is that an i i dot i six no, it's h it's, it's h -L. l oh it's h l h l l two hundred d w t I got an unboxed one sitting. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, you, <laughs> you just you trying to sell it? You got to sell it? Nah, I got mine for three nineteen. All right. With everything, you know, shipping and, and handling. Yeah, and make sure you have that. You make sure you get that dual tray. You need that dual, that dual tray. tray, and I'm not talking about your envelope tray. <laughs> okay, but um, before we go. And well, if you're on here, it ain't gonna matter to you, but just know that we do upload our videos, um, our, 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 our Wednesday nuggets. So it will be uploaded to YouTube and Facebook. However, it's gonna take a minute because we have gone over by 27 minutes. So it's gonna take some time to download. So if anybody, you know, you're talking to somebody and they'll say, well, I didn't see that video posted. Just tell them, give them a day or so because it takes time to download when it's this large. Did you find this helpful? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Okay. Did it read well, right? Huh? Jennifer is direct messaging me, trying to get me in trouble. Jennifer, behave. <laughs> Good evening, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us and hope to see all of you again next Wednesday. What's their topic next Wednesday, Liz? I don't know. Is it, is it, is it signature name affidavit or is it... Um... I believe signature affidavit is last. <laughs> okay. You, you put Are it you out there. So, huh? Say that again. Are these recorded? Yes, ma'am. We'll put it on YouTube. Perfect. Yep. Thank was you. that Natalie who just asked that question? She, she wasn't listening. Yes. She yes. wasn't you listening. Weren't, I just finished saying that. Well, no. oh. Candy just told us what the next class is. <laughs> it's no, because normally, <laughs> normally I work 1130 to 830, but I had a mentoring this week where I was training someone, so I was able to catch this one. <laughs> All right. It, yes, ma'am. It will be recorded. And uh, uh, thank you, Kathleen, because I couldn't remember. It's when not to stamp. You Have you had those situations where you've got these forms and it's like you're signing it as a notary and you want to stamp it because you signed it? Well. Oh, that's the next class. All right. Good evening. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs>
Good night, everybody. Good, Good night, night, everyone. Good night. Thank you all. <laughs>